Hello, I am Marina Prolova Walker, a music lecturer, and with me is a wonderful pianist, Maxim Kinasov. And together we are going to introduce to us a great piece by Johannes Brahms, which is called Variations on a Theme of Paganini, Book One. So, Variations on a Theme of Paganini, Brahms took someone else's theme. So let's start with that uh, item, that theme that comes from the violin caprice number 24 by Niccolo Paganini. Paganini was uh, an extraordinary virtuoso. He was basically the first musical celebrity in Europe at the beginning of the 19th century. And his playing was so transcendental, was so superhuman that audiences sometimes were even slightly afraid of him, thinking that he was possessed by a demon, yeah, so this demonic virtuosity. And many composers who at the time heard Paganini, for example, Chopin or Liszt or uh, Schumann, wanted to do something like that for the piano, to write also a series of studies which would be just as virtuosic on the piano as they were for Paganini on the violin. And this is where our musical meme comes from. You will recognize it immediately uh, when you hear it because it was used so many times by so many different composers, including Rachmaninoff, including Luta Swarovski, and even by a jazz composer, Fazil Sai, very recently. So yeah, it, this theme can be used in basically any genre. I'm going to talk about the musical structure of this theme before you hear it, yeah? Because we are going to hear it in chunks. So it consists of two sections. The first section is only four bars long, and then it's repeated. And it's very simple and very memorable. And I will ask Maxim to play us just this first section. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, so you heard that it is very simple. It's based on two chords. We call these chords dominant, uh, sorry, tonic and dominant, uh, or chords one and five. So you hear one and five, one and five, and then you hear it again because it's so good. Yeah, but it's very, very basic elementary chords. We're not going yet uh, anywhere. And then you have the second section, which is longer. It's eight bars. It's actually twice as long as the first, and it's also repeated. And there we go on a, a more interesting and enticing journey through the harmonies. You will hear a very beautiful harmonic sequence. You know, I recommend you, if you want to write a pop song, just use that progression, and it will become a hit. So in Russia, we actually call it the golden sequence. In English, unfortunately, there's nothing so colorful, so we just call it the circle of fifths yeah, to explain how technically it passes through a number of keys without stopping anywhere. Yeah, and these keys are separated by a fifth. So you, you pass through the circle of fifth, and you come back home to the cadence, and you get five, one, chord five, chord one, to end that section. So I will ask Maxim now to play as the second section, also with a repeat. <laughs> wonderful harmony. So this is our theme, and now we're going to have a lot of variations. Yeah, this book one in itself has 14 variations, or at least Brahms tells us there are 14. Actually, there are two hidden ones in the code, but we'll get to that soon. Yeah, usually variations ha have um, come in these sets of six or sets of 12 or sometimes 32. And when I saw 14, I thought, well, this is a very strange number. But actually, when you think there are two books, and in each of these two books there are 14 plus two hidden variations, then you get to 32. Yeah, so that's a little, little, little secret. Anyway, so to explain to you what a variation is, I'm going to use a prop. I'm going to use this box of chocolates. Uh, so you can have some very boring boxes of chocolates where all chocolates are the same. That's not what we're interested in. Yeah? Or the boxes of chocolates where all the chocolates are different. That's also not what we're interested in. So that's why I picked one like this, yeah, where you have three types of chocolate. But also, 
you probably know which one is the most basic chocolate in this box. Yeah, and that's the one that's best known. It's called Ferrero Rocher. Yeah, and that's the one uh, in the drawer wrapping. Here it is. And that's our basic milk chocolate. Yeah, it has a hazelnut inside. Uh, then it's, uh, there's some cream filling. Then there is some wafer. Um, the wafer is coated in chocolate. And then there's more hazelnut stuck, uh, stuck on top. Yeah, so it has sort of five layers. It's a very complicated structure. Yeah, so then imagine this is our theme. And then we have this dark chocolate version. Yeah, not everyone likes it. But basically, it has completely different taste. Uh, but the structure is exactly the same. It also has all these five elements. It has a nut inside, yeah, it has a cream filling, and then the wafer, and then the coating, and then something stuck on top. Yeah, so, and it's exactly the same size. So this is the relationship of our theme to our variation. Yeah, so despite the variations all being very, very different and sounding very different, and having different tastes, so to speak, yeah? They don't necessarily even play the theme, but the harmonic structure and the structure of these two sections yeah, will be exactly the same. And then there is this. Yes, so this is uh, Raffaello, and you might like it most of all. It's my favorite, yes? So this is also a variation on the original, but it is far more removed from the original than the dark chocolate version. Yeah, so what happens in this cycle of variations is that you have 10 variations in the minor key, yeah, in, the, in minor mode. It's the same key, the same mode as the theme. And then you get a little bit already weary, you know, from being in the same mode, and you need a change. And that's when you, you, when you have a major variation. And that's, the major variation is, is more different. You will, hear, you will hear it that it's different, and that's why I suggest that it might be something like a white chocolate version. We'll hear it in a moment, but before we, we do that, I would like to ask Maxim to play the very first variation and to let you listen for the theme. The theme, the melody is not there, but there is something there. Yeah, if we, you just play the first section yeah, with the repeat of the first variation. So there was no theme, yeah, but there was definitely the same chords. So that is that that structure was still there. And then there is also an interesting thing that happens in the next variation, that it is a variation on the first variation. So it actually has the same very complicated texture, but um, you will recognize it as more related to the first variation than to the theme. So if we could have just the beginning of the second variation. Wonderful virtuosic playing. And now uh, we're going to hear a little bit, uh, actually not a little bit, but a whole major variation. And I wanted to remind you yeah, that it is very different. So when you hear it on its own, you probably won't even realize that it has any relationship to the theme at all. It sounds like a beautiful lyrical piece. It has a lot of m movement, a lot of movement of voices. It's, it's kind of quite complicated. There's nothing basic about it at all. But believe me, that very structure is still there. Yeah, despite uh, the fact that it lasts much longer because it's in a slow tempo, it still has the same number of bars, yeah, and it still has the same shape. So now uh, we're going to have a quiet moment, yeah, and I'm going to ask Maxine to play the whole of um, variation in A major. <laughs>
that is really a magical moment. That is, I think, the, the core, yeah, the lyrical core of this whole set of the variations. In character, it has very little to do with the theme, yeah, because it's uh, it's not rigid at all. It's very flexible. Yeah, it's much longer. But yet, the, the structure and the harmonic structure is still there if you hear, um, if you listen to it very carefully. So now I'm going to talk about virtuosity yeah, and about various <laughs> virtuosic tricks. The point is these variations are extremely difficult. Just as Paganini wrote very virtuosic music for the violin, Brahms wrote something extremely difficult. And he doesn't even give you any sim anything simple at the m beginning. Yeah, even the first two that you heard a little bit of are already uh, very, very difficult, but they're also they're becoming sort of a little bit more flashy as you go along. And towards the end, we're going to have this wonderful um, imitation of uh, violin playing, I think. We're going to have this glissando, and uh, that also is very, always very exciting to hear. So I'll ask Maxim to demonstrate this for us. <laughs> Totally amazing, isn't it? It's amazing, and it's a piano trying to imitate yeah, the, the violin playing. So, uh, how many variations are we going to have? Let's go through them again. Yeah, so we're going to have the theme, we're going to have 10 variations in the minor key, then we're going to have two variations in the major key, and then we're going to have another two in the minor, and then a coda. Yeah, this uh, uh, last section of uh, any major piece is called a coda, a tale. Yeah, and there you will have these hidden variations that, that Brahms actually doesn't mark in the score, but they still you will recognize them. So, as a listener, what can you do with the variations? You know, it, it's always tempting to count them. Yeah, and I can tell you, if you try doing that, you will get it wrong. Yeah, you will always lose count. Uh, so, um, alternatively, yeah, you can just try to, to hear where the major comes in yeah, and, and realize how different it is to the minor. And now, to end this little lecture, um, I will ask Maxim to play the last, uh, the, the coda of, the, of this piece and um, ask you to listen out for this hidden variation. Thank you very much for your attention. 